You know, I've come to a bit of a realization that, uh, I have a problem, dude. Like, look at this. Look at this, dude, <laughs> what? Despite the game being a big old buggy mess, I, I still love it. I keep coming back for almost five years. I've been coming back and I keep playing. And guess what? I keep freaking spending the $7 to get the new DLC every single time. And now you have Nemesis right around the corner and I'm probably gonna get him. And I've come to the, the thought that, you know what? Why don't I make content about this game? I mean, shoot, I'm also rank one killer and survivor. Not right now, cause the rank reset, but I mean, I think after all this time, I've got to know something, right? Or at least that's what I'm going to tell myself to validate the amount of hours I have. So hey, let's jump right in, shall we? Hello everyone, my name is Zach and welcome to the first ever full killer spotlight here on the Fusion channel. And uh, today we're going to be dealing with uh, this guy. Isn't he pretty? Nemesis belongs to Chapter 20, Resident Evil, released on June 15th of 2021. The first thing that you'll notice is, dude, look at the size of this boy, or man, thing, zombie? I'm not entirely sure, but either way, this thing is bigger than even the Trapper, which I think makes him the tallest killer in the game now. Not only is he the tallest person, he also is the first killer to carry people under his arm as opposed to over the shoulder. So that's kind of interesting, but let's start focusing on some more important stuff, like his power. Oh geez. You know, I remember the day when killer's powers used to be this big, you know? Now every killer's power is this big. All right, anyways, let's break it down, shall we? The power as a whole is called T-Virus, and it incorporates a couple things. First and foremost, it incorporates special attack tentacle strike. Basically, it's like an alternative attack to punching them in the face. It looks like this. When you hit a survivor with this, if they're healthy, they first become contaminated. Contaminated survivors have this blue status effect over their name, and when they do become contaminated, they're briefly hindered, which basically means they're slowed down by a little bit. If a survivor is already contaminated and then they get smacked again, they will become regular injured. And if they're injured and they get smacked again, they will become downed. So effectively, it's a ranged attack, but you have to hit them three times with it. Not only does he have his tentacle attack, but he also has special enemy zombies. Basically, it's two AI-controlled zombies that roam around the map, that move a little slowly, they shamble around, and if they hit a survivor, it will inflict contaminated first, but then injure them. Effectively, it's like the same thing as hitting them with a tentacle strike, which actually can lead to an interesting combo like you see right here, when if you tentacle strike someone and then they get smacked by a zombie, the little, I've coined the term the zombo combo, but you know, you basically just have these two zombie guys roaming around the map for you. They can get pallet slammed by survivors to kill them, or they can get blinded by survivors to distract them for a second, but these guys just kind of roam around the map and give you a little bit of information, as well as occasionally do some damage. And the last part about his power is his mutation rate. Effectively, every time you contaminate a survivor or you kill one of your own zombies with your tentacle strike, you get mutation points. Contaminating a survivor with a tentacle strike for the first time will give you three contamination points. Hitting them with a tentacle strike after they're already contaminated gives you one, and destroying one of your own zombies gives you one. Punching your zombies does nothing though. And as you can see here, if you get six contamination points, you reach mutation rate two, and if you get 15, you reach mutation rate three. At the mutation level of one, at the beginning of the game, it just does no benefit. At level 2, it lets you break pallets or walls with your tentacle strike, and at level 3, your tentacle strike gets a little bit of range. Like, I'm talking, I'm pretty sure it goes from 5 meters to 6 meters. That's it. Also, maybe you guys noticed that as your mutation rate grows, if you look in the bottom left, his hand looks a little different. I think his whole body looks different too, but, you know, from the first person, you can only see the hand. But yeah, that's about everything with it. Basically, the tentacle strike gives you some chasing potential, the zombies give you a little bit of information and some pressure, and the mutation rate gives you a few extra tools up your sleeve. Also, now would be a good time to mention that last part, if you remember this right here at the top. 
uh, vaccines, basically the counterplay to Nemesis is that around the map there will be five cool looking chests that survivors can open up and inject themselves with a vaccine to clear the contamination. But as I said, there are only five of them. And if you have this add on, there's only four of them. And if they do decide to get their COVID vaccine, then uh, it does reveal their location via Killer Instinct, which is, you know, I guess kind of nice. So that about sums it up for his power. Next, I'm going to show you what I call field notes from playing a couple games as him. As you've seen in a couple of my clips, and as you see right here, your tentacle strike not only is a medium range ability, it also can go over medium height barricades. This means that certain pallet loops, you can actually sneak in an extra hit if you time it right. I've found that infecting people early on is a great way to get a lead and keep a lead. Remember that smacking a survivor for the first time gives you three contamination points, so all you have to do is hit two different survivors with your tentacle strike and you're already at level two and able to break pallets. Getting level three will happen naturally, and the extra range is nice, but honestly getting level two and being able to break pallets mid-chase does affect how you chase. Because keep in mind, when you're tentacle striking, sure you move slowly, but you can still move towards them a little, whereas when you kick a pallet regularly, you have to look down and you stop moving. So at least this way, you're able to keep going a little bit. Lastly, I want to mention the importance of your zombie buddies. While getting a hit is not going to be very often, you can count on them to give away the position of the survivors. Keep in mind that their arms are at their sides when they're idle, but if they see a survivor, their arms will go up if they enter a pursuit. So if you look at their aura and you see that their arms are up, that means that they at least were chasing a survivor and a survivor is in that corner, that section of the map. And that information could be vital in certain situations. Before I wrap everything up, let me talk about the killer's three unique perks. Lethal Pursuer, Hysteria, and Eruption. Lethal Pursuer is the most straightforward perk in the game. At levels 1, 2, and 3 respectively, it gives you 7, 8, and 9 seconds to see the survivor's auras at the very beginning of the trial. And that's it! It gives you 9 seconds of cheese, and then it turns off. However, depending on your killer, seeing where they spawn and being able to jump on them right away, especially if you're a stealth killer, could be game-changing and could cause a snowball. So honestly, I quite like this perk. Hysteria is a perk that whenever you injure a survivor by any means, it just causes all injured survivors to suffer from the oblivious status effect, including the person that you just hit. The oblivious lasts for 20, 25, and 30 seconds respectively, and then it has a 30 second cooldown. And honestly, another very simple perk, but not even a bad one. And since it activates on any type of injuring, not just M1ing, it could actually be good on people like, say, Legion or Gunslinger, people with alternate attacks. Lastly, there's Eruption. And honestly, surprisingly, this is actually my least favorite of the three. And not even because it's bad. The effect is that after you kick a generator, it'll turn yellow. And then whenever you down somebody, all of the yellow generators will explode for 6% penalty, as well as incapacitate any survivor currently working on it for 12, 14, and 16 seconds respectively. A quick reminder, incapacitated was an effect added by the twins and effectively, it's like the equivalent of not being able to work on generators, not being able to do anything that would progress the game. You can just run away and throw pallets. That's about it. The problem that I have with this perk is that with the current state of the game and how fast generators get done, unless you can apply your eruption early onto the generator, I'd find more often than not that you'll come across a generator, you'll kick it, plant your trap, but then it gets popped before you get to down somebody so you might get no value at all. Now granted, that might not necessarily be true if you're playing someone like Billy with a lot of pressure. However, overall, I still think it's a little bit more niche. Before I wrap it up and give him a final grade, I'm gonna give him some badges. And um, for reference sake, uh, here on the channel, what I'm gonna do for our spotlights is I'm gonna give these air quotes badges to killers to kind of give them categories as well as certain strengths, weaknesses, that kind of things. Most of them are serious and there might be a few silly ones. But anyways, the first one I want to give him is the Omni Killer Badge. This badge is awarded to him because he has a little bit of everything. The Tentacle Strike gives him some chasing power. The Zombies give him some information and some more long range pressure. The Vaccine Killer Instinct gives him some more pressure. He's never not particularly strong in any one category. He gets a little bit of everything. So the Omni Killer Badge. He will also be getting the Alpha Chad Badge because look at the fucking boy. All right, enough of that. Uh, but yeah, he's fucking huge. He deserves it. And finally, the last badge is the Fuck You and Your Pallets badge, given to him because he is given a power that allows you to hit people over pallets. 
a good way to tell survivors, fuck you. That's everything. Hopefully you're ready to go kill some survivors, and before you go, break animation, kick animation, kill them animation. <laughs> And of course, there's ouch animation. I give this killer a final rating of a B. He's okay. He's fun. Not the greatest, but he's fun. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed and I hope you learned something new about Nemesis if you're a newer player. Tell me who you want me to see. Who, you, blah, 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 blah. who do you want me to review next? To go ahead and type it in the comments. Otherwise, I'm just going to pick someone random. Or if this new killer comes out, because by the time I'm done finishing this video, the new killer probably will be out. Anyways. I hope you guys enjoyed. It's been a pleasure. Peace.